just a robot. If you've ever been a part of the Dragon Ball community on YouTube, then you might have heard of Mad Star Media. Even though his name is spelled Mustar Media, but people hate it when I call PewDiePie PewDiePie, so I'll just call him Mad Star Media. But that's not how it's spelled. Now, the first thought that crossed my mind when I saw this guy was... Holy shit, it's a human version of me. He's bald and has a weirdly shaped head. If you put human skin over my avatar, it would look exactly like him. Now, I'm not trying to say he's ugly, and I don't want to judge him by his appearance. I'm just saying he looks a lot like me. The very first video I've seen from Madstar Media was his Goku vs. Saitama video. The fight was very obviously traced, but I liked it nonetheless. I also really enjoyed a video from Madstar Media where he debunked a lot of the claims that people make about Superman Prime 1 million. However, over time I discovered he had a massive ego, which I suspect he keeps contained in that giant head of his. Now, some of you who know about Madstar Media's ego might be saying in the comments, Just a robot, is this drama even still relevant? And the answer is yes! He's still going to this day! Now, some of the points people make about Madstar Media are kind of stupid. Some people like to point out, Oh my god, Madstar Media is a tracer! I'm already tracer! And, uh, yeah guys, that's obvious. He has even admitted to that. However, if you dig a little deeper into this, you'll start to see how much of an ego he has. Why I trace? There's two primary reasons. But first of all, let me say that I don't always trace. I don't trace everything. Bro, like 98% of the stuff you make is traced. And when you don't trace, your animations look way worse. If you need to do it, that's perfectly fine. Just admit to it. People will understand. Tracing is perfectly fine if you give credit. Now, of course, you don't have to give credit to who made Superman and who made Goku because... I'm pretty sure 99.99% of people who watch your videos know who Goku and Superman is. However, when you trace over animations that don't have anything to do with Goku and Superman, you should at least tell people where you traced it from. He traced scenes from both Hajime no Ippo, which he did previously, and My Hero Academia. So, the question I have for you fans out there is, I have screenshots of his video and of his description box in his videos of when he uploaded the video. And none of it gives any credit to any of the other studios that did the animations that he traced from. Clothespin has exposed Madstar Media for a lot of this shit, and shout out to him. I'll link his channel down below. Now, a lot of Madstar Media's fans like to say, oh, come on, tracing is not that big of a deal. And the only reason why he traces is so the work will go by much, much quicker. And while I agree that's a good reason to trace, the other reasons that he gives for why he traces are complete bullshit. Now, I could draw it on my own. It wouldn't look 100% perfect, but it would look like 90% and it would take me 10 times as long. Yeah, no, bro. It doesn't even look 20% as good. The second reason why I trace is because it feels more authentic to the audience and gives more of an emotional impact when they're watching it. That doesn't even make any sense. If you're as good of an animator as you claim to be, then you could make it just as authentic. Now, I know what a few of you are thinking. Wow, Jar, this guy sounds totally uninteresting. So what? The guy traces other people's animations, doesn't always give credit, and has a slightly big ego? And you would be correct, but this is where we get into the good stuff. Despite the guy constantly tracing artwork, he's very well known for copyright striking people who criticize him, such as Clothespin, Ellis Mark, oh, I'm sorry, totally not Mark, and AW Gamer. And he himself has said he is totally fine with people taking his videos and chopping them up. And if anybody did that with my animations, they took it, they cleaned the audio out, they chopped it up, and they dubbed over it, I, I would be okay with it. Well, Totally Not Mark did just exactly that. And what happened? Got hit with a copyright strike. I'm going to play a few clips from Clothespin and AW Gamer just so you guys can hear their experiences. After I made it clear that my video fell under fair use, you can see how desperate he became when he realized I was right. Look at how he goes from condescending to overwhelmingly reasonable as soon as he realizes he fucked up. He told me that he'd remove the strike if I deleted the video and never made a negative video about him again. That's a direct abuse of YouTube's copyright system and your account should be removed. More importantly, how about you actually respond to my points next time instead of trying to censor me like a coward. YouTuber Totally Not Mark created a parody of Anime War Episode 1 in which he wiped the audio and dubbed the script using what the Japanese words were actually saying. 
I am perfectly okay with that, and actually impressed someone would invest that much time to do so. It falls under a parody of sorts. You are correct, Master of Media, it does. I am, and always have been, acceptable with reviews, reactions, parodies, and AMVs. So, we already know that's not true. When I first made my video, he copyright struck my video. Now I'll link Clothespin's video down below about the whole Totally Not Mark situation. I highly recommend you go check it out, but in case you don't, basically Madstar Media was making up all this stuff about Mark, saying Mark said he claimed the animations as his own, when this is all Mark said about him. Now, I am by no means a legal expert, but this looks a little fishy. That's all he said. He said nothing about you claiming that that footage was your own. Honestly, my favorite video on Madstar Media is the one done by Anime Live Reacts. I really like his accent. It's very Puerto Rican with a slight New York feel to it. One of the things he did in his video was catch Madstar Media talking shit about the Dragon Ball fan base in his live stream. The problem with the Dragon Ball fandom is that the majority of them are like 12 years old. They're very close-minded. You know, you guys are so fucking obsessed with it. And honestly, guys, you should probably avoid talking bad about, you know, the things your fans are into. And it's funny he does these things in a live stream and he gets surprised later that people find out about them. You do know if you're a popular YouTuber, anything you say on the internet is going to be immediately documented. He also said a few things that were just flat out wrong. There's, okay, there's basically about 300,000 maximum, maximum number 300,000 Dragon Ball fans on YouTube. Is this wrong? Perhaps my favorite thing Madstar Media ever got wrong was when he found a Dragon Ball reviewer who was female and thought he found the first one. Let's continue. This video right here, it is called Dragon Ball Super Episode 64 Preview and Analysis featuring Olga. However, when this video first came out, it was actually called something completely different. This is the original screenshot and it is called First Female Dragon Ball Super Reviewer. That's what he called it. He claimed that she is the first female Dragon Ball Super reviewer, and it is 100% not true. You do know girls can like Dragon Ball 2, right? It's not that rare of a thing. Girls can be into guy shows, and guys can be into girl shows. Hell, there's an entire group of grown men who like My Little Pony. But his response to this situation was truly something to be behold. He could have just said, oh, sorry guys, I made a mistake. But instead he said, well, um, this. And in fact, in my video with Olga, they commented saying some shit trying to make me look bad. Cause like I said, it was the first female Dragon Ball reviewer. And they're like, it's not the first female Dragon Ball reviewer. There's this girl and this girl and this girl and this girl. Like, I don't go searching for fucking female Dragon Ball YouTubers. Oh my God. Yeah, I got this wrong, but I'm not a thirsty boy like you. I don't just go searching for Dragon Ball YouTubers who are female. Bro, you literally need just common sense to figure this out. But hey, does Madstar Media at least care about his peers in the Dragon Ball community? Well, the answer is no. He actually talked shit about them on a live stream at night so they wouldn't see it. But Madstar Media was so upset with me that he actually did a live stream attacking me and attacking Geekdom 101 while we were sleeping. The only way that I found out was because my subscribers were tweeting at me like, yo, yo, Master Media is talking about you behind your back. Geekdom thinks he's the fucking overlord of Dragon Ball. Like, Geekdom's content is fucking ass. I'm sorry. All he does is search websites and Twitter and forums to be the first person to release Dragon Ball news. But if you ever watch his actual videos, they're fucking ass. All right, all he does is talk. So, with all that being said, the guy's a tracer, he steals artwork from other people, and if you want to argue that it's not stealing, well, he'll copyright strike people who use clips of his video, which would make him a hypocrite. So either he's a hypocrite, or he's a thief. You pick which one. He has a very low opinion of the Dragon Ball fan base, a fan base he's a part of, and he's a total snake. Okay, so if you guys don't really care about my content and are only here to hear about Mad Star Media, well, I'm done talking about him now, but if you care about my content, please stay tuned after my outro song because I have a few things I need to talk about. And yes, they are regarding my old channel. But for now, let's check out all the new pieces of fan art.
My eyes have seen the glory of the cleansing of YouTube. Debunking SJWs and feminazis too. We criticize reactionists in hopes they get the boot. Just the robot marches on. So with all that being said, could you tell us what you do as a YouTuber, Jar? Well, I do a lot of stuff, actually. I do videos on politics, commentaries, power scaling, cartoons. And for you weebs, don't worry, I talk about anime as well. I'm at 90k subs, not flexing or anything. Guys, let's help Jar reach 100k subs by clicking subscribe. Also, check out his second channel. I promise that you'll love him. I want to give a big thank you to Just Jargon for voicing these lines for me. A link to his channel will be down below. Okay, so I have come down with a virus, so next week I am going to be re-uploading all my old TMOS Boss videos onto this channel in one big long video, and yes, of course they are going to be remastered. The video I'm uploading after that a week later is going to be the part one of the all versions of Goku versus all versions of Superman video. Now I know a lot of you have noticed that my old channel has been uploading videos, and I want to make this clear, they're not the hacker, these are actually my friends. Also, none of the people in the video were me. They don't sound a thing like me, so I have absolutely no idea how anyone thought that. I have gotten in contact with them, we're trying to get everything set up so I can get back in. And once I finally do get back in, I'll be uploading a video explaining things in more detail. Also, this channel I have now has not been hacked. Nor has my Twitter, and nor has my Discord. Next time before you guys start freaking out, Wait a week until I upload a video explaining myself.